Oscar Pastry versus Lando No Chances into Turn 1. One of the best teammate pairings in Formula 1 history and a topic a lot of people love to discuss. And it's something I'm gonna love to talk about today. Because this is the most even matchup I think we've ever seen. On one hand, we have Lando Norris, multiple time race winner, got hit in the face by Daniel Ricciardo and is incapable of growing pubes. Right? <laughs> no pubes yet. Man's had a good moustache. It might be that. I, I'm, I'm not able to grow this. If you have... <laughs> and on the other corner, Oscar Piastri, also a multiple time race winner, comes from Kangaroo Land and is Charles Leclerc's adopted son. If that isn't the closest matchup on the grid right now, I don't know what else to tell you. But what I do know what to tell you is that these two are not just the closest matchup on the grid, but most importantly, the most action packed. Because holy shit, the entertainment they have provided us in the 2024 season has been a blessing. That I even received news that Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris have both been hospitalized recently for back pain after carrying 70% of the season. It's a side-by-side, -side, and Oscar Piastri's going all the way around the outside to take the lead with a boulder. Now, obviously, this isn't a comparison video on who's actually the better driver. I don't want the comment section to turn into fucking World War Z. But the point is, these two are so closely matched that it's just unfair to compare them. It's like comparing Michael Schumacher to Ayrton Senna, Mika Heikkinen to Kimi Raikkonen, Logan Sargent to Nicholas Latifi. You just can't tell. So instead, I'm gonna focus on the shit shows that Oscar and Lando have been providing us this season, and the reason why they're so entertaining is because, like I said, this is one of the closest matchups we've ever seen. But obviously, it wasn't always one. Back in 2023, Oscar was not on the level of Lando for the majority of races, and a lot of people pretty much laughed when Whenever his fans started comparing him to Lando, calling Oscar overrated, which is the most brain dead thing I've ever heard. But oh boy, how the turntables. In 2024, McLaren finally gets the car they need to win both championships. And this time, both Lando and Oscar shine equally. During the start of the season, Lando pops off, gets podiums in Australia and China. Then he gets his first win in Miami, thanks to Kevin Magnussen hitting the World Trade Center, making Lando a favorite among McLaren fans as he became one of the very few drivers able to make Max Verstappen look beatable. But he immediately loses that favoritism as fast as he loses his positions after lap one, as he did exactly that in Hungary. In the race, Lando bottles the start, and as a result, Oscar takes the lead with a brilliant drive, securing what seems to be a smooth victory until McLaren fucked up the strategy mid-race, putting Lando ahead of Oscar, so then Lando had to give the lead back, forever putting a bad taste to Oscar's first win. Like, bro did not even celebrate after that. Amazing job, McLaren. Your driver looked more happy to receive the award for Grill the Grid than an actual race trophy. Huh. Step one win. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm very happy with it. It's uh, actually heavier than the F1 trophies I've won. And let me tell you, I am very happy about it. I swear, apart from Ferrari, McLaren has got to be the shittiest, non-shittiest team I've ever seen. But fast forward to Belgium. This time, Oscar truly pops off. After Lando loses two positions in the start, who would have guessed? No! Oscar pulls off an Ayrton Senna level performance. He overtakes George Fumble and Sergio Perez on the straights, pulls a beautiful outside overtake on Chuck Leclerc, and finishes the race in P2 after George Russell got crucified by the FIA. So then the favoritism leaned towards Oscar. But jumping to the Dutch Grand Prix, Lando pops off even harder. He fumbles the race start again, but overtakes Max Verstappen's RB20, which has recently turned into a tractor. Thanks to Sergio Perez draining Red Bull's entire development budget with his tactical maneuvers. So then Lando wins the race by 22 seconds, every Red Bull fan was crying, and McLaren fans were back to favoring Lando Norris. Now, as you can tell by now, the driver favoritism in McLaren has been going back and forth like people watching a tennis match. And it's because both Oscar and Lando have pulled off amazing performances that it's so hard to choose who is the better driver. And honestly, I don't think we have to choose. You know, as your professional F1 yapper, I have to say that we can like both of these drivers equally. Although I do like Oscar more though, but um, <laughs> oh shoot, man, sorry guys, that was just, oh man, the voice is in my head, oh, they got to me. But regardless, going back to McLaren being the shittiest, non-shittiest team at the same time, this is because they have the fastest car, but they make the stupidest strategy calls. And the reason why is not just because they're actually just fucking stupid, but mainly because McLaren didn't know which driver to prioritize. Is it Oscar or Lando? Which has led to people constantly debating online on who should be prioritized and how the team has to make a decision really soon. But despite 
despite the pressure, Zach Brown kept on saying, nah, we're gonna do our own thing. Now, a lot of people see this as a bad thing, but honestly, I think it's amazing. I cannot be the only person here that wants to see Oscar and Lando duke it out. Let skill ultimately be the decision maker. I know that's probably bad for the driver's championship, but let's be real, guys. It will be so fucking entertaining. We'll either get Lando and Oscar fighting for a win in a fierce battle, which would be exciting and cool, or they get into a double DNF, which would be sad, but also cool. But after Lando's dominant win in Zandvoort, a lot of people were still pushing for Lando to be prioritized. McLaren still not actively doing all they can to help Lando secure the WDC is actually insane. McLaren needs to start prioritizing Lando and stop fucking up. McLaren ignoring Lando's chances at the driver's championship is not the mentality that a top field team should have. And as F1 arrived in Monza, all I gotta say is that Oscar took those personally. As the McLaren's are side by side, and Oscar Piastri's going all the way around the outside to take the lead with a bold and brilliant move. Lando still can't... That could be move of the season. That was extraordinary from Piastri for uh, McLaren, and it cost Norris another position. The big lure slide, through goes Leclerc. Mr. Pastry pulled off an Oscar-worthy overtake on Lando, going down the inside in turn 4, catching him off guard, and also allowing Charles to overtake him in the process. Holy shit! Monza was honestly such a clusterfuck. Charles Leclerc won the race by using a Ferrari strategy technique called Fuck It We Ball, going with a one-stop strategy until his tires were butt booty ass naked. Oscar finished the race unhappy with P2, but finished ahead of Lando in P3, Mercedes was nowhere to be seen, and Red Bull was in the shit. I guess Toto was right the entire time. Car, you've got a problem, change your fucking car. Then you change your car because Checo has been saying the car is fucked and no, your driver has been going off. Speak to my drivers. Checo has been saying the car is fucked. But the real highlight of the race was McLaren's papaya rules. Now this was something the team kept on saying on the radio every time Oscar and Lando would be of penis touching distance from each other. And if you don't know what it means, McLaren's papaya rules is essentially don't ram your teammates asshole with the nose of your car. Or in other words, don't be Red Bull, Ferrari, and especially Mercedes. And as I've said before, I like this rule. You know, it's entertaining and in Monza the drivers followed it perfectly, giving us hard but fair racing. But unfortunately, despite favoritism leaning towards Oscar again after Monza, Lando was still closer to Max in the championship. So then people really started pushing McLaren to prioritize him. Nico Rosberg interrogated Zach Brown after the race. Isn't it time to introduce a little bit of team orders, let's call it that way. Will Buxton also critiqued the team. How are you not prioritizing the guy who's gonna make the most out of this? How do you not even swap them on the last lap? And diehard Lando fans on Twitter went apeshit on Piastri, going, Oscar almost cost McLaren a double DNF in Monza twice now. Lando saved him both times. Did, did you even watch the fucking race? That was a clean move. You know what's crazy? Is This is good, bro. This is good. But why not put this energy into a job or something? Like Look, I'm sorry that Oscar outdrove Lando in that race. Sometimes Lando outdrives Oscar as well. It happens. These two are both very talented drivers, but don't slam Oscar for doing his job. I don't know if you guys have heard the quote yet as well, but McLaren wants Oscar to be Bottas, but Lando isn't Hamilton. Whoever made that, you cooked so hard. And even if Lando is, Oscar isn't gonna be Bottas either, especially since Mark Webber is his manager, and everyone knows just how much he's been through as a second driver. But as F1 went to Baku, McLaren folded to the pressure and finally set priority on Lando. This is probably the dumbest move I've ever seen. Because if they were gonna commit to this anyway, it should have happened like five races ago. But whatever. At least they now have a driver to prioritize. And I'm pretty sure Lando fans are creaming all over the place. But they had to zip up their pants faster than usual. Because in qualifying, right after McLaren says they're going to prioritize Lando, he fails to get out of Q1. This cannot be real. Right in the final sector of Lando's lap, he gets a yellow flag forcing him to bail out and so he ended qualifying in p17 while his teammate qualified to the front row i swear at that moment i was just mentally preparing myself to see mclaren tell oscar to do this But thankfully, McLaren isn't that stupid, so then as the lights go out in Baku, Oscar goes insane. He does not bottle the start, pulls off an amazing inside overtake on Charles from further back than Pierre Gasly's hairline, and he stuck it cleanly. And just before you think that was it, Oscar wasn't the only driver with genius moves. Carlos Sainz pulled off the pro gamerest move in history, which looked like this. It's nearly second for Perez, but it's Carlos Sainz who gets by, and this one's not over yet. He and Sergio Perez 
has crashed in the ending stages of the Grand Prix, and although this wasn't exactly Carlos' fault, I still think this was a genius move by him. Not only did he secure Charles's podium, but he also got his future team, Williams, 10 points, so they can have a bigger budget for next year. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. Oh, and Oliver Behrman scored a point for Haas, and Colapinto scored more points in that race than Logan Sargent's entire career. Enough said. Though, enough has not been said for Sergio Perez. Red Bull is already in the gutter, and then this happens. The one-time Checo finally puts up a respectable drive. And speaking about other drivers, Stroll was also the usual disappointment. Before the race, he whines about the car. This is not a car. This is not a car right now. Then he treats his engineers like shit. Exit yeah, 1 or 2, yeah. brake it to turn 3 a little bit as well. But you're all the same. Yes, the let's three. Back. And in the first lap of the race, he dive bombs Yuki Tsunoda like an idiot. But regardless, Oscar wins the race, and I gotta say, his celebration goes hard. And Lando did a solid recovery drive as well, finishing in P4. But this race has proved one thing. Oscar Piastri is a fucking unit. His win in Baku solidified the fact that he's a worthy competitor to Lando, and not just that, he's also the driver to score the most points in the past 10 races before Baku. Oscar Piastri is world champion material, mark my words. And after this race a lot of people saw it too and started saying that McLaren probably should let Oscar have equal chances to the championship. However, some people were disagreeing with that, particularly a lot of F1 journalists who have been asking for Lando to get priority since day one. And what I have to say to these guys is, sure, let's be generous and say that Lando is Hamilton after this race, since you guys want Oscar to be Bottas, right? Well, even if Lando is Lewis, Oscar isn't gonna be Valtteri, because I'm sorry guys, but you got Rosberg instead. If Lando wants to win, he has to earn it, like his win in Zandvoort. That was impressive as shit. And Oscar has proved that he can be just as good as him, so McLaren cock-blocking Oscar with team orders would be such a huge waste of talent and entertainment. But in other news, despite Lando getting a lot of love and favoritism, he has been hated as well, and it mostly originated from these three clips. <laughs> I wasn't complaining, I was just complimenting you on top of your car. Oh, very good, right? Uh huh. Simply lovely, huh? Very confident to throw out a simply lovely after the race. I know uh, as much as they're friends, <laughs> I know the competitive Max is. This is overtaking everyone, it's still a BSC, uh, right? So. I don't know if it matters at all. Now, a lot of these things don't exactly matter that much, like Lando saying Max's iconic line, simply lovely after winning, which Daniel says is a big deal, but then again, I'm pretty sure Max doesn't give a flying fuck. The cooldown room in Hungary, though, is the one that makes the most sense to me. Lando was obviously pissed about giving the position back to Oscar, but he did not have to redirect his anger towards Lewis. So a lot of people say this is a sign for Lando to get a grip, tone down his arrogance, and start being more humble. But in my opinion, I just think this is a sign for Lando to go on his villain arc. If people hate you in a sport, doubling down is the best thing you could do. Max Verstappen was pretty much treated like a villain by everyone. Oh, because for the third year running, it is Max Verstappen to a few boos, I'm afraid to say. But he just didn't give two shits, and that's what made me love him even more. Just don't get carried away to Lance Stroll levels though, Lando. That's how you lose your entire fan base. So in conclusion, Oscar Pastry is a talented son of a bitch. Lando needs to go on a villain arc. McLaren have stepped up, but they clearly don't know what they're doing. They might be the most brain-dead constructor winners. And the hate, controversy, and drama has been crazy that Drive to Survive producers are probably covered in their own jizz. Also, like usual, don't forget to hop on the Patreon for more exclusive content and early access videos. You know how it is. And finally, just in case you guys forgot, Lance Stroll's a bitch. Thank you so much for watching.